Hi and welcome back to Grade Guide. This revision video on the circulatory system is directed towards students completing the junior cycle science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. Based off the NCCA learning outcomes, three points we'll be revising in this video are the importance of our blood and the circulatory system, the components of blood and what each of them do. We'll also study the three main types of blood vessel in the circulatory system and identify the difference between them. Together, the heart, blood and blood vessels make up our circulatory system. It's important because it's what transports blood to each part of our body. We need blood for lots of reasons. Among the most important is for transport. The blood transports oxygen and glucose to each cell in our body, which then allows us to make energy. It shuttles waste like carbon dioxide back to the lungs for exhalation. And it also transports heat around the body, maintaining our body temperature at 37.5 degrees Celsius so that enzymes in all of our cells can work properly. The blood also has a large role to play in defending us from infection. So what can we find in the blood that allows us to do all these things that we've mentioned? Well, blood is composed of four parts, called red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and plasma. Red blood cells are by far the most abundant type of cell in our blood. They are small biconcave shaped cells. The word concave means to have a surface that curves inwards and the prefix bi means two in Latin. So the term biconcave describes how red blood cells have two surfaces that curve or hollow inwards. Red blood cells are what transport oxygen in your blood. They pick up oxygen that we inhale in the lungs and carry it to cells all around the body. What lets them do this is something called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin are made from iron and protein. They're found all over your red blood cells. They're what oxygen atoms latch onto so that it can be transported all around the blood. Hemoglobin has a deep red colour when it combines with oxygen, and this is why our blood is coloured red. We mentioned hemoglobin before in the food topic, where we learned that we need iron in our diet so that we can have healthy hemoglobin and hence healthy blood. Next are white blood cells. They're bigger than red blood cells, and their job is to fight off disease by killing any microorganisms like bacteria or viruses that make their way into the blood. They can do this in two different ways. Some white blood cells can create proteins called antibodies. The white blood cell then sends these out to destroy germs in your blood. Other white blood cells can change their shape so that they completely surround or engulf germs, trap them and then kill them. We can use the term cell eating to help us remember this because it's almost as if the white blood cell has eaten the germs to get rid of them. Platelets are important because they can clot the blood. Think of what happens when you fall and cut your knee or graze your elbow. Blood starts to leave your body through these damaged blood vessels. As you can see in the image on screen, platelets immediately rush to the wound and glue themselves together around it, forming what's known as a clot and eventually a scab. The work of platelets means that we don't lose too much blood when we get a cut, but also that germs can't make their way into your blood either through an open wound. Mostly made from water, plasma is the liquid part of blood. All blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, are suspended or float in this liquid plasma as blood flows around the body. Aside from transporting all of these blood cells, plasma is also needed to bring heat around the body so that we can maintain our body temperature. Interestingly, if you placed a sample of blood in a tube and let the blood settle by leaving it for a while, what would happen is the separation of plasma from blood cells. Because liquid plasma is less dense than other blood cells, the pale coloured plasma will rise to the top of the test tube, while the denser red blood cells settle to the bottom. If you then shook the test tube and mix the contents again, the blood would go back to its recognisable red colour. So taking a look at the image on screen, this depicts each of the four components of blood. We can see how if you look into a blood vessel with a microscope, you'd see red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets all floating in liquid plasma. Finally, let's take a look at the types of blood vessel we can find in the body. Blood vessels are the tube-like structures that blood travels in around the body. There are three types of blood vessel to be found in the body. Blood can travel through either an artery, a vein, or a capillary. So what are arteries? Any blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart is known as an artery. 
An easy way to remember this is by thinking of what letter the word artery begins with. A for artery, A for away. A feature of blood in an artery is that the blood is under high pressure. This is because heartbeats have forcefully pumped blood out of the heart and this force puts a lot of pressure on the walls of the artery. Taking a look at the diagram, that's why arteries need to have a thick muscular wall to be able to keep strong to withstand such pressure so that they don't burst. The lumen, coloured in white on the diagram, which is the inside space in a blood vessel where blood flows through, is very narrow. Almost all arteries carry blood that's high in oxygen. In fact, there's only one artery in the body that doesn't, which we'll discuss when studying the heart. In many ways, veins are the opposite to arteries. Their job is to carry blood towards the heart, the opposite direction to an artery. Blood in veins is under much lower pressure than an artery because the heart doesn't pump blood directly into veins. This means that they don't need to have a thick muscular wall and they have a wide lumen for blood to flow through. All veins in the body, with the exception of one, contain deoxygenated blood. Also, veins possess structures inside them called valves. These valves are important because they prevent blood from flowing back on itself. They make sure that blood continues in one direction along the vein until it makes its way back to the heart. Capillaries are the third type of blood vessel. They're much smaller than arteries and veins, but they're far more numerous. There are so many capillaries in each person. If you could take them all out of the body and place them side by side, they'd stretch all the way around the earth more than twice. Capillaries reach pretty much every cell in the body. Blood full of glucose and oxygen flows into capillaries through an artery and then to each cell in the body. Oxygen and glucose diffuse through the walls of capillaries and into cells so that respiration can take place and energy be produced. Afterwards, carbon dioxide and water diffuse from cells and into capillaries before blood is drained back to a vein and then back towards the heart. Capillaries are perfect for diffusion because their walls are extremely thin, only one cell thick. We speak more about diffusion in our video on the respiratory system. You can actually view capillaries without a microscope. If you take a look at your eyes in the mirror, the tiny red lines you can see on your eyeball are capillaries bringing oxygen and glucose to cells in your eye. That's it for the blood and blood vessels. Revise over each of these parts to the topic in preparation for your exams and use this list of keywords to test yourself on the topic. Thanks for watching this grade guide video. Make sure to take a look at our part two video of the circulatory system topic where we'll study the heart and the flow of blood around the body. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Best of luck with your revision.